So how would you be feeling after drinking that glass? Um, pretty sleepy. After half pie, I'll start to feel, feel the effect kicking in. I'll go out and I will have easily four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pints. Hi. Hi, guys. Hey, how are you doing? Good. Dr Brown studies the genetics of alcoholic liver disease. We can clearly explain these three different experiences with alcohol on the basis of genetic variation. Alcohol is first converted into a chemical called acetaldehyde, which becomes toxic at high concentrations. The acetaldehyde is then broken down mainly in the liver by a second enzyme into carbon dioxide and water. These can be eliminated from the body. So we've got the results. Alice and Joe, you guys have the same variant and you're different to Glenn. So you guys do not get rid of alcohol as quickly. 65% of Eastern Asians and 5% of Europeans have the genes that code for the slow metabolizing enzyme at this first stage, meaning that alcohol stays in their system for longer. But then we do see a difference in this second enzyme that gets rid of the toxic byproduct of alcohol, the acetaldehyde. And Alice, you have a, have a typical genetic profile for this, so you get rid of it as, as fast as anyone else. But Joe, this is where uh, you have a variation in your genes that means that you don't get rid of the acetaldehyde, which is what we're seeing right now looking at you. <laughs> in Glenn's case, his enzymes work normally, so he breaks down both the alcohol and the acetaldehyde at the typical rate. So how come he can drink much more alcohol than most people without feeling it? There is an alternative pathway which actually breaks down alcohol by a different method. What's different about this pathway is that it's inducible. There is no limit to the amount of alcohol that you can carry on passing down that pathway. So Glenn has induced or switched on this second way of dealing with alcohol. Correct. It goes from the gut to the liver, it's broken down. It never gets into the bloodstream, so it never has that effect on the brain, which is effectively where we feel drunk. Does this mean that the, the alcohol is less dangerous in terms of the effects on, on Glenn's liver than it would be for someone who doesn't drink that often and that regularly? Absolutely not, OK? The alcohol is still being broken down by the liver and the breakdown products of the alcohol are what's causing the damage to the liver tissue. 